glue head overnight to dry, so I was able to unclamp the brackets and peel off the tape. And today we're gonna do more stripping. I'm gonna strip for you, and for some reason YouTube finds that a little bit salacious and potentially unsuitable for advertisers. Each time I post a video, I need to have it go for manual review. I can't think of anything less salacious than what I'm doing here, but we will strip for you today. I've got one more strip here to add of the body color, which will be the deck of the boat, before we get up to the water line, which is right about here. This, this mark right there is the water line. And so we'll start out by beveling this strip with the robo bevel getting it prepared for the next strip to come on. Um, I did, after stripping off the tape and the uh, unclamping the brackets, I went came by with uh, some hot melt glue and just checked if any of these uh, strips were loose on the forms and I put a little dot of glue under it. I was having some trouble yesterday with my hot melt glue. It was didn't seem to be sticking well to the forms and so I switched to a different stick and see if that will be any stickier. If I continue to have problems with the hot melt adhesion I will just strip the green tape off and glue directly to the forms. Um, it makes things harder to release but at least the strips will stay in place. So before I do the robo bevel, I'm just going to come through and uh, look for any glue squeeze out from that hot melt glue that I just applied. So the process of beveling here, here's the form, here's the top edge of the strip. We want to have the next strip come in and fit flush to there, so no gap right in there. And so again, we're going to take and bevel this top edge so it is square to the edge of the form there. So I have this little shoulder plane that goes in the robo bevel and if I run that along the top edge keeping it flush against the form there, so flush against that surface, that will take and peel a little bit of material off the corner. and start squaring that up. But it's hard to hold this, you know, it's easy to hold it here, right here where we've got the form. What my robo bevel is bridges from this form to the next form and so in between the forms I still have registration on those forms. So I still have a, the forms to guide me as I go from one form to the next. So by taking the robo bevel along here, we're carving a little bit off the top of the strip. If we put the little shoulder plane in the tool, same thing happens, peeling top edge off. It can be hard to see what each pass is doing if we put some witness marks here and then run the tool across. You see we're peeling off the edge closest to the form. Here where the form is pretty round, you need to do quite a bit of shaping to that top edge. So each time we go, we peel that witness line back a little bit more. So. It, we're done when that witness line disappears. So we're almost there. If I put a strip down now, you still see a little bit of that witness line and we've got a slight gap there. Now the witness line is pretty much gone. We put this down here nice and tight. So the robo bevel bridges in between from one form to the next. We're just manually holding this plane. It's hard to estimate that angle in between the forms. The robo bevel lays up against the forms and lets you get the angle between the forms 
if you need to twist the tool a little bit, that's why the hole's in it. To make it so the whole tool will twist. So as the bevel rolls from one form to the next, the tool estimates that angle in between. It's important to keep these strips down tight against the forms while we're beveling it because if it springs out that'll change the relative angle um, that we're creating with the tool and make it so our fit's not quite accurate. The bottom of the robo bevel, this is what we run against the strip. And it's got a curve to it so it can deal with the uh, curving shape of the kayak. If it goes perfectly straight, um, the tool ends up bridging over the strip and the edge of the plane does not end up cutting into the material. So it's important to have this curve here. If it was simply straight, the tool would not work. I keep my eye right on this window where the tool is to make sure it's actually cutting and that everything's tight up against the forms and tight down against the surface of the strip. You might need to lift or lower the end of the tool a little bit to keep it cutting directly on that blade. These are very cute little tools made by Veritas. Well, well made, good quality steel on the blade. They are tiny little tools and one consequence of that is these tiny little thumb screws here that tighten up the blade and adjust the in and out location of the blade. It's all adjustable but they're hard to get your fingers on and get them good and tight. If, you, if they get loose the blade comes out of position and doesn't cut as well. It's also very easy for chips to get jammed up in the throat here. Got to poke them out with a pencil. That happens even with the big, bigger shoulder planes. It's just a small space in there. They curl up and get caught up in there. So when everything's good, you can take just a scrap piece of strip as another way to check it out. It should be nice and tight, just like that. When you're happy with your bevels, grab the next strip. We're counting down 8765, circle side, port, hull. Notice we still have our reference lines all lined up and the writing is all in order here. So it's keeping everything matched up. We're grabbing strip number five with the circle on it, port side, bringing it over. Give it a test fit, make sure everything makes sense. Here's our reference lines here, those line up. Strip fits down nice and tight. We might want a little bit of a twist here. And just hold it in place briefly with the clamp. All right, need a little bit more bevel there. Need a little bit more bevel there. You see, I can close it up by tilting it this way. Make sure it's not just some gum on it or something. All right, that's better. It's fitting right up tight against the form. Can't really close it up, but twisting it so we're good. So with the strip all fit, the bevel good, it's time to put some glue on it. 
One of my viewers, Ken Inglis of Toronto, sent me this uh, glue dispenser. Um, I think uh, he got it from Lee Valley Tools or something like that. I haven't used it before. It looks like it's pretty good. It's got a little built-in cap, a very small tip on it, and we'll see how this works. So we'll take the new strip off and put a little glue on the inner stem and then just run a light bead down the top of the strip. And we don't want to add much glue here. Just enough to get a little squeeze out. And this seems to do a nice job. It's a nice clean little bead right where you need it. No point in putting more glue on than is necessary. We just want a little bit of squeeze out. No point in using more glue than we need. We just want a little bit of squeeze out. If you get big drips coming down the side, you just put too much. And the key to that is a small tip like this has. Apparently these tips are replaceable, but it does have a good cap attached to the dispenser. So hopefully it won't get too gummed up with glue. So after running a bead down, take the cap, put it back on. We'll give this thing a little bit more test, see how it works. Now that we got the glue on there, put the strip back up, get our reference lines aligned here, put a little clamp on it. Get the other end situated. I'm working out from the middle. Get the brackets on. I want a little bit of squeeze out. So a little bit of squeeze out there. Get the bracket on. Clamp it down. These brackets I cut with two unequal legs. I want as much surface area as I can so when I clamp I the bracket stays in place but sometimes you got a little narrow opening that's hard to reach into so the narrower leg is useful when I'm getting down into narrower spots. I think I can still use the... Nope. Now I'll continue down with the brackets on the other direction. I meant to heat up this end here and uh, give it a little pre-bend. I forgot to do that. It will work just fine. Once we've got uh, the brackets on, come back with the tape. So again, we're going to get a little bit of squeeze out along that edge. See a little bit coming out right there. the edges aligned. We have a little bit of excess hanging off the end here beyond the inner stem. I'm going to just trim that back. Again, we don't want anything interfering with the next strip coming in on this side and so this little bit's gonna get in the way. So I can either take my knife and just whittle that back, or I can take plain get it back out of the way. So now the next strip coming on over top here will not be, have any, any interference from this strip. I had a clamp on here to get this tight on this side, but obviously a clamp here will be in the way of laying down the new strip. So we'll see if we can accomplish the same thing with a little bit of tape. This is actually all going to get cut off when we go to put the outer stem on. We're going to trim this back to where this is about three quarters of an inch thick, and so all of this gets trimmed off. I could, frankly, I could shoot a staple in here, right here, and it would end up being cut off, so it would be okay to shoot a staple in there if I just needed something to work as a quick clamp. I'm 
we'll get this in here for now and then when we come in on the other side we will trim that tape off I'll now uh, prepare this side for the next strip so beveling it and getting it ready to go Tight spot right in here, a little bit of twist to the strip. The robo bevel is just a little bit awkward to get into that tight spot there. There's a lot going on. Holding it like this probably works and it does work pretty well. So again, we're looking for strip number five, this time without a circle. So 8765, and this is the starboard side. Do a dry fit. Try the high bot again. And put the strip back on. It is helpful to get the strip up onto the where it's going to go before putting all the clamps on because just having it laying out can end up putting some twists on it and making it hard to get these these joints good nice and tight. It's important to get good clamping pressure on the glue. The glue wants to rise up and float the strip off and so if you don't maintain the clamping pressure on it, end it up with the looser joints. Time for lunch and I'm hungry, so I will just leave the brackets on, leave the tape on. Instead of coming through with the hot melt glue, the brackets and tape will provide better clamping pressure. And then if I need the glue afterwards, after everything's dry, after lunch, I'll put some glue on it as necessary. And now all the brackets and clamps can come off and I'll peel off the tape. So if we look at this last strip, my intention was to make this about even with the water line. And it's pretty close. But due to the shape of the boat, when I started out with the point here that was parallel to the water line and add strips up on top of it. Here you see the strips start curving over. We're down here, the strips are going almost straight up and down. As a result, this strip here is higher relative to that water line than the same strip is down here relative to that water line. If you measure right here, the top edge of the strip is at about one centimeter, where if you go back a few stations, we're now here at one and a half centimeters. And you keep on going back even further. Here we're 
almost two centimeters. And so, as you see, the, the strip, because it curls over here a little bit, um, ends up not actually being parallel to the water line. And this is fine. You know, I could just switch to my bottom color and put, maybe put some accents in here, and it would look really sharp. There would be nothing wrong with the way it looks. But um, it doesn't actually correspond to the water line, which is kind of cool to have an actual design water line. So this, is, this line here is where, it's supposed to, where the boat's supposed to float when somebody about my size is sitting in it. And so, you know, a good way to see how well I did with that is actually to have that water line stripped into the boat and be an integral part of the construction of the boat. And so I'd like to make the top edge of the strips here actually follow that water line. So the way I go about that is with this handy little jig here. The whole secret to this jig is this top edge here, right here, is perfectly straight. So even though there's a notch in it, it goes straight across from here to here. So if I line up something on this side, this point here is lined up with that line. So if I take this jig here and lay it down against that line like that, I can now transfer that line to the outside of the boat by making a little mark with my pencil right there and work my way down the length of the boat transferring that line from the inside form to the outside of the strip. Obviously this doesn't fit into there on this side, but I've got the shorter leg. I can do the same thing, place this in there and make my mark right there. Doesn't fit there either. So I end up with a series of marks down the length of the boat. Now I've grabbed uh, one of my spare strips here and I'm going to essentially connect the dots here. The thing to remember here is these dots aren't perfect. I've done my best to put them exactly where they need to be, but chances are they're a little bit messed up. So they're not gospel. I'm just going to use those as guidelines. What I want to make is a perfectly horizontal water line, one that's going to be straight down where the water is when the boat's floating on an even keel. So I'm going to take this strip, lay it up here, and I'm putting it above the mark. That way when I put a clamp on it like this, the clamp's not in the way of making a pencil mark. If I end up putting it down here, although it would be easier to see the mark, I have a clamp there and putting a, making a pencil line here, I'd have to stop and lift the pencil over there. Not a big deal, but it's Having a good sharp line here makes a difference in how well you're going to cut the line. So I'm going to start out by putting a clamp on every other mark and let the strip fare itself out in between. So like before with the first strip, we want to get our eye right down on that line and really be able to eyeball it and see if there's any wiggle waggles happening the whole way across. Getting our eye right down on that line, looking for irregularities. So anything that looks a little bit high or a little bit low. And often all it takes is just releasing the clamp and see where it naturally goes. That's better, but now it looks a little high. And we're interested in the bottom edge of the strip. The lighting makes this so the top edge is a little bit more distinct, but we're interested in where the bottom edge is going. Carefully looking for any humps or valleys, anything that looks a little bit out of straight. And what straight means in the context of this, of a boat like this, is it's straight in one plane. So it'll be a fair curve in another plane.
at the bow, I didn't have any marks to go by. All I can do is eyeball it. As Jimmy DeResta says, if it looks straight, it is straight. And what's meant by that is, you know, we're not building spaceships here. We're building a kayak. This water line serves no function. It's purely aesthetic, so the only problem with it when it's not straight is somebody sees it and says, that's not straight. And so if it looks straight, it's straight enough. And so we're just going to try and make this fall on a nice straight line, and it tends to curve up at the end here. I do have a little bit of a guide on the form here, but it's easier to just place a clamp on it and try and get a nice straight line that way. You know, I could put a laser line on here, you know, take half an hour to set up the laser line. But again, all we're looking for is something that looks straight because again, it's only aesthetics and aesthetics are only what your eye can see. And so doing our best to make a nice straight line there, we're going to be good. The key to getting an accurate cut is to have a good line that's easy to follow, easy to see, and is precise. We don't need to cut a groove into the boat with our sharp pencil, but if we make it sharp enough that we can get a nice crisp line, that'll be a lot easier to follow. So when we go to draw this line on the boat, we don't want to scribble it. We don't want to have a lot of lines and have to figure out which line we're trying to follow. We want one line that's nice, sharp, and crisp. It's not a scribble. It's a nice, crisp, straight line. And so, just running along the bottom edge of the strip, I'm twisting the pencil as I go to keep it so it's sharp, so I'm not getting this broad nib. I want a nice, crisp line. With the line drawn, we can remove the clamps. Get our spline out of the way. Now we have a line there. It's going to be easy to follow. It's visible. Some places it's nearly on top of the seam between the strips. It may seem like a waste to have even installed this strip here because I've got like a sixteenth or less of strip of that strip left in some places here. But as it goes down here, it gets wider and wider. And so up here, we've got a good quarter inch of the strip left. This last strip was really the reason for putting it there was so we'd have this material right at the end and we'd get, end up with a nice straight water line. I'm gonna cut the line with this Japanese pull saw. One feature it has is this little woodpecker tooth that lets me do a plunge cut. And I'm doing, I'm gonna start at this end, but not all the way at the stem. I don't wanna cut into the stem. And being that I'm right-handed, it's much more comfortable to cut down from the, on this side from the stern towards the bow than it is to cut from the bow towards the stern. I'm gonna do a plunge cut right about here, cut all the way down to the bow, then I'll cut this, I'll cut this strip off the inner stem. It also helps to leave this glued to the stem while we're cutting so this end's not flapping in the breeze. So I'll start my plunge cut. I'm going to cut right above that line. Just to saw through until I get it started. Okay, now it's through. So now we start to do longer strokes. And again, we want to keep just above the line. The more material you leave above the line, the more you have to remove. So don't overdo it. You get find a place where you're comfortable and you're pretty sure you can maintain. Um, and start cutting. The saw wants to do nice long strokes. So when I'm going around the forms, I do short choppy strokes, but otherwise I'm doing nice long strokes 
letting the saw do the work. I'm not pressing very hard. I'm only holding on to it with my middle finger and my thumb. I'm pointing down the length of the shaft with my index finger. And I'm holding all the way at the end of the handle. By holding at the end of the handle, it doesn't take much to keep the saw accurate. If I need to make a little adjustment up or down, it's easy to do just a little adjustment. The closer more choked up you are on the handle, the less margin of error you have. Any little move will make a bigger deflection. So it's easier to hold it from the end. And again, we don't need to death grip it. We're not gripping it hard. We're just holding on to the end and letting the saw do the work. If it starts to chatter like that, two things. It, the strip's not supported in between the stations, so just a hand on it will keep it from chattering a little bit. And also, ease up on your pressure a little bit. Cut a little bit lower angle. As you get around the form, we don't need to cut into the form, so shorter strokes to get past the form. One thing I'm going to talk about more with the tools, hand tools like this, is every time you're making the tool cut, be intentional about it. Know exactly why you're making that cut. You're not a motor that just makes this saw move. Your goal is to make and do something that improves the boat and makes it makes another step of progress towards your final goal of a finished boat. So think about every time you pull the saw, is it aligned with the line? Am I going to hit the forms? Everything you're doing, you know, we don't want to waste energy just sort of running our hands back and forth. I'm cutting sort of horizontally here, so instead of aiming down perpendicular to the strip, I'm cutting more at a horizontal line here. Just to be sure I don't overcut it, I'm going to come back and clean this up with the robo bevel when I'm done. And so I'll get the exact angle I want with that tool. With the saw, I'm just roughing it out. And we don't want to cut into the inner stem here, so I'm going to start bringing the saw parallel to the face of the wood. And break off the strip. So I have this little bit left to cut, and cutting it like this is awkward. It's hard to see what's going on, and I don't want to cut into that inner stem. So getting down here next to it from below where I can see and hold the saw in a comfortable position, get that cut started, and now come down parallel and try and cut in towards the inner stem and break that off. And that little chip we will come and deal with later. So I didn't get as far as I wanted to today, partly because I decided to go ahead and be anal about the water line here. I could have just started adding accents on top of the strips I had installed, and then go on from there. We're doing the anal job on this boat and trying to make everything sort of as good as we can. And so I'm trying to make that water line a real meaningful water line that actually corresponds to how the boat will float. So that took a little bit of extra time. And then of course, I'll try and edit around this but I cut the whole other side to the water line with the uh, microphone dead. The battery for the microphone died, so I had no audio for that. I'll, that will be handled all in the editing, and hopefully it'll all look good to you. So tomorrow I will clean up these edges, 
plane them down, make them perfectly straight, add some accents, and hopefully we'll start to get some strips for the bottom of the boat and we'll get that started tomorrow. It'll be a little bit of work with the robo bevel and some other rabbit planes to true up this water line, get it perfectly straight, and things will look awesome, I think. So please post your questions to the comments. I really appreciate hearing what you have to say and uh, answering your questions. If you haven't done it yet, hit like, hit, give me a thumbs up. If you'd, you'd like to subscribe and want to see the rest of these episodes, hit subscribe. My Patreon supporters see these videos a couple days before the general public, so if you're impatient and want to see what's going on, head over to my Patreon page and give me a minor donation and you'll get full access to all the videos as soon as I get them done. Until tomorrow, thanks for watching and happy paddling!